So I've been playing around with SVG quite a bit recently, and I've really wanted to just show you guys how to save SVG or scalable vector graphics out of Photoshop, because we can do this now. If you have the latest version of Photoshop CC, this does not happen in CS6 and earlier, and it's got to be like CC 2014, I believe it is, uh, or later, you can do this. Now, in order to create SVG, if I come under File here, you're going to see that we have what's called Save for Web, obviously. This has been in here forever. We can't, as far as I can tell, use Save for Web to create SVG out of Photoshop. We need to use the Extract Assets or the Generate. And typically, most of us are going to use the Extract Assets feature. Now, there's a couple things I need to talk about as far as SVG is concerned. SVG is, uh, well, it's vector for the web, right? And you'd think that if it was originally vector, it's going to be vector for the web. Well, that kind of makes sense. But one thing I tend to do a lot of is I tend to come from Illustrator. And I will create my vector in Illustrator and then bring it to Photoshop. Now you can place an Illustrator file, an AI file, directly into Photoshop, which is really great because then you can link to it. Or you can copy-paste. I'm going to copy-paste from Illustrator. I'm going to show you something here. I've got just a house. This is a symbol, but whatever. It's just a, a shape. I'll copy it. Go back over to Photoshop. Now, if you decide to place, you can place the link or embedded. That's great. But I'm going to paste. So I'm just going to go paste. And you'll see, okay, we got everything we want. Now, most of us have been told and taught and whatever over time to use smart objects. That's great. The problem with Illustrator files in Photoshop, saving for SVG, is that it won't work. Okay? If you choose smart object currently, now I'm talking, this is like May of 2015. If you choose a smart object, what's going to happen is it's going to rasterize the Illustrator content. So if I click OK, I got my house. Awesome. I scale it. Let me zoom in a bit so you guys can see. You know, I put it on one of my logos here, one of my objects. Let me actually go ahead and select, put that out there. I'll select like this thing right here and get rid of it. Um, if I can grab it, there we go. And I'll put the house right there and scale it quickly. So it's vector artwork, right? That's awesome. And what I could do is if I wanted to, I could go take that vector smart object and double click on the thumbnail over here, right? Go back to Illustrator and maybe change the color, do whatever I need to do, okay? Awesome, save, go back, done. Now, in order to save SVG, what we can do is we select the layer or the group. You can have a folder that becomes the SVG, but you select it and anything that's named in the layers panel or selected for that matter, uh, named with a .ping, a .jpeg, a .gif, or a .svg will show up in the extract assets. So I'll go under File Extract Assets with that folder selected, or with that file selected rather. And you'll see there it is, Vector Smart Object. Let me zoom in. You can see it's pixelated. Great. That's because it's a ping right now. Well, let me choose SVG, and you'll see what it does. So it's actually rasterizing it, which really stinks. Now, I know Adobe is aware of this issue. They're actually aware of, and it's not really an issue. It's actually... I was ex it was explained to me, and it actually made perfect sense. The Illustrator file is a, a, a PDF, essentially, and it's not going to crack in there to look at the vector content, so it rasterizes some of it and blah, blah, blah. But in the future, this will probably be fixed. I just wanted to bring that to your attention, okay? If you want to bring artwork from Illustrator, what you can do is you can go ahead and copy it from Illustrator and paste it, and you want to use something like a shape layer. Shape layers or shapes in Photoshop become SVG. So if I choose shape layer, click OK, you're going to see, well, there it is. Now, it's not going to work for everything. I'm going to tell you that right now. I got really high in my voice when I said that. <laughs> that was a little crazy. Um, but it's not going to work for everything. And you'll notice that I can double click on the shape layer thumbnail and change the color, for instance. It's just a simple shape, right? I'll get rid of this one and then put this one in its place. Now, if I go take a look, you'll see I've got the shape there, and I've got the purple thing right here. Let me actually take these two, and I'm going to group them together. And you can see I just hit Command-G to create a group, and I'll call this, like, a uh, house button or something like that. Okay. Now that it's a shape layer, and this is also a shape as well, shape layer, if I select that group and come under File and go to Extract Assets or use the shortcut, you'll see it. I'm going to select it. There it is. I'll zoom in, bing, 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 and I'll choose SVG, and there we go. So we now have SVG. This is actual scalable vector graphics, which means it's going to use XML, it's going to plot it out, it's going to create it as vector and be scalable and responsive on the web, which is awesome. So I can then extract that, 
It's going to change my layer names, which is just fine. That's totally fine. I'll go out to my desktop here and save it out. It's going to ask me to replace. That's great. And I can see that I've got it out here somewhere. House button.svg. There we go. Now I can go over to my browser, for instance. And let me open up another browser real quick. I'll go to Safari, for instance. And I'll open up that file or drag it in even if I want to. Assets, house button, SVG. And you guys can see, as I scale this thing up and down, it looks beautiful. All right. Like I said, if you're coming from Photoshop, you want to make sure that you're actually using the shape tools. You can see over here that I have things like the rectangle, the ellipse, all this kind of thing. You can intersect them. You can create you know, different masks, things like that. You can draw with the pen tool. If you draw with these things, you want to make sure you don't create a path or pixels. You create shapes. That's the whole idea. So the next time you decide to use the extract assets and save as SVG, don't be surprised if you get a rasterized version because it really matters how you build the content as to whether or not it's going to be vector within the SVG.